I am so excited today because we are headed to Leeds Castle. This is a castle that I saw years ago and thought, oh man, I want to go to there. I'm excited that today's the day. We're driving there now. We've stopped to see if Ian can get some drone footage from a public footpath, but it's really, really windy. So not sure if we'll be able to fly the drone, but really excited to go see this beautiful castle with a moat. I love a castle with a moat. Um, here in Kent, we've been able to see some really cool castles lately and some neat moats, but I'm thinking Leeds might be the best one of all. Let's see. This is quite the tree tunnel driving to Leeds Castle. It's lovely and rather magical, but we're just hoping we don't meet any oncoming cars because it's also really bad visibility and super narrow. As you walk up to Leeds Castle on the long winding path, you first see water, lots of beautiful ponds, and I think this is called a weir. I love the view of the castle above the weir. So pretty. They have this really cool little duck ramp that the ducks just walk up when they want to come out of the lake. I love it. Now, uh, if you saw my Blenheim Palace video, you know that ducks like to attack and bite me. Um, oh, they are really noisy. Okay, so I do have some seeds in my car. So maybe if we have time later, we'll come back with some seeds and feed these guys. I'm hoping this shows up on camera, but these geese are hilarious. They're standing here nibbling the tops of the tall grass. So cute. The gardens are very picturesque to walk through on your way to the castle. These are some Egyptian geese, which are really pretty and I believe are somewhat rare to see. The mom and dad are here with their babies, so I stood far away and filmed this on telephoto. Then this goose started doing an arabesque, which maybe meant he was pooping, so I stopped filming him. Now we're walking up to the outer edge of the castle. During its more than 900 years of existence, Leeds Castle has been a Norman stronghold, a royal residence for six of England's medieval queens, a palace belonging to Henry VIII, and a country retreat for influential people of the 20th century. This is the site of the former Barbican, a fortified tower at the entrance to the castle, meant to protect the water supply of the moat and nearby water mill. The outer Barbican contained a mill that provided a food source if the castle ever became besieged. There was also an inner Barbican with two entrance gateways, each protected with a portcullis. A drawbridge over the moat connected the inner Barbican to the gatehouse. Despite all of these fortifications and defensive protections, Leeds Castle was not primarily a fortress for defense. Most of its life, it's been known as a place of beauty, respite, and luxury. A sanctuary for aristocrats, monarchs, and heiresses. So let's learn more about them now. Unlike the other castles around here in Kent, Leeds Castle was not a military fortification owned by men. It was a homestead, a luxurious retreat for several powerful women in medieval times, including six English queens and two wealthy heiresses. These are the queens of Leeds Castle. Eleanor Castile from the 1200s. She married at the young age of 12, and Eleanor and King Edward I had 15 children. She bought Leeds Castle and created an exotic retreat influenced by her Spanish upbringing. Followed by Margaret of France at the beginning of the 1300s, Edward I gifted Leeds Castle to his second wife, Margaret. They had three children. She enjoyed her time at Leeds Castle hunting and wearing her extravagant clothes. Followed by Isabella of France. King Edward II married Isabella when she was 12. She was cultured and well-educated. She was a pious English queen who, as Edward's widow, owned Leeds Castle until her death. Anne of Bohemia was the queen of the castle, 
in the late 1300s. She was a very elegant queen. She and King Richard II stayed at the castle when they wanted a retreat from the formalities of court. Joan of Navarre married King Henry IV in 1403. After his death in 1413, she was on good terms with her stepson Henry V initially. However, Henry accused Joan of being a witch and a traitor, so she was imprisoned at Leeds Castle on two separate occasions. Catherine of Valois was the daughter of the French king, and her marriage to King Henry V was expected to unite England and France. However, it was a short union, as his death in 1422 left her a young widow. As she was the mother of the future king, Henry VI, she maintained her own sophisticated household. Her eventual marriage to Owen Tudor led to the creation of the Tudor dynasty, also known as the Tudor dynasty. She was the last medieval queen to own Leeds Castle. Catherine of Aragon was betrothed at a young age to Prince Arthur, older brother of the future king, Henry VIII. Widowed as a teenager in 1502, she then married Henry in 1509 and was one of his closest advisors. She was highly educated and multilingual and became the first female ambassador in European history. Henry transformed Leeds from a medieval castle to a luxurious Tudor retreat. And as a symbol of their loving union, he created a set of apartments furnished with Catherine's personal favorite symbol, the pomegranate. Leeds Castle was under royal ownership until 1552, when Edward VI gifted it to a court favorite of his. Later, it passed into the hands of the first heiress, Catherine Culpepper, who is pictured here. She inherited the castle from her father, and then when she married Lord Fairfax, she became Lady Fairfax, and the castle was owned by the Fairfax family, who are pictured here on either side of Lady Fairfax. Lady Olive Bailey was the Anglo-American heiress who was the final owner of Leeds Castle. The decoration we see in the castle today is what she completed during her time owning the castle. This private dining room shows that she chose to decorate it in a medieval style using objects and decorations that were collected from historic sites around the country. She basically was trying to recreate the retreat that Eleanor of Castile had created. This is the library which Lady Olive Bailey decorated in a 17th century French style in the 20th century. Lady Bailey invited the rich and famous to dine with her here at Leeds Castle including politicians like Winston Churchill and Joseph Kennedy, actors like Charlie Chaplin and Errol Flynn, and even royal guests such as King Edward VIII and Wallace Simpson. This is Lady Bailey's games room. She loved playing competitive card games and gambling for high stakes. Here, Lady Bailey would write correspondence with the help of her assistants. She was an avid collector and loved collecting things from the Tudor period, including portraits of Henry VIII and members of his court. The fact that Leeds Castle had been owned by Henry VIII is probably much of the appeal and reason why she purchased Leeds Castle. This is the salon, which was built to be a location for 1920s dance parties. This staircase was installed in 1927 and made to look really old and aged at Lady Bailey's request. This courtyard was designed by the Queen from Seville who loved fragrant gardens and exotic fruits. In Tudor times, this area would have been the private bedroom of Henry VIII's wife, Catherine of Aragon. But this current room was decorated in 1967 by Lady Bailey. This is Lady Bailey's actual bedroom, decorated in the French Regency style. This marble-covered bathroom is from the 20s, but was the utmost in the latest inconveniences. Though the castle was used as a hospital during World War II, after the war, Lady Bailey resumed her efforts in renovating and decorating the castle. She continued to collect art, and created an exquisite retreat for her many social events, as well as creating a family home for her adult children and their families on the castle estate. This is Lady Bailey's mother, Pauline Whitney Paget, who was the American heiress from whom Olive inherited her fortune. Lady Bailey had two daughters from her first marriage, Pauline and Susan, shown here. She also had a son from her marriage to Lord Bailey. 
Upon her death, the castle ownership was transferred to the Leeds Castle Foundation, which now administers the running of the castle. For lunch in the snack bar, we're having sandwiches and juice presses. I got the one with rhubarb, and then I'm most excited about this. Kent crisps with a picture of the castle on the front and salt and vinegar with bedendin cider vinegar. The gardens are pretty, especially when the sun is shining on the pink hollyhocks. I love dahlias, but I haven't seen this kind before. It looks like it's inside out. The back of the petals are really brilliant, and then the front side is really pale. Isn't that funny? This mommy duck with all our babies is so cute. I actually do not enjoy mazes, but Ian has talked me into doing this one. Ian is claiming that he is really good at mazes, so we're gonna see how this goes. I wonder if he went the right way. Maybe the left way was the correct way. So close, but so far. That's the end right there. But that's the way Ian was walking. Now we're following loads of screaming school children. And finally, we are victorious. Finally, we reached the lookout at the middle of the maze, and it's lovely to look down on the neatly trimmed hedges from above. They look very pleasant from this perspective, but whilst traversing them, I found them rather vexing. My favorite bit is exploring the grotto down below the lookout. So come along with me to discover the mysteries of the mythical and enchanting grotto. This is the magenta part of the grotto. Honestly, I think this is the coolest grotto I've ever been in. Here at Leeds Castle, got a good grotto. Even though a ticket to the castle and grounds is crazy expensive, you do get to also visit the Birds of Prey Center and do this goofy golf course here if you want and go play on that play fort in the background and visit the maze and grotto. And also you can come to the castle beach. It is actually a pretty long walk from the car park to the castle. Ian and I have really only come to visit the castle today and we've walked 10,000 steps. <laughs> We're on our way back to the car park now. There is also a land train that you can ride around the grounds, but we didn't take the train today. I wanted Ian to go sit on this tree and dangle his feet in the river, but he refused. He was too sensible. Thank you, Leeds Castle, for meeting and exceeding my expectations. We had a wonderful day out exploring and learning about this very old, very historic, very interesting castle. Please check out these videos of other fabulous castles we visited in the area. And stay tuned, we have more castles of Henry VIII's wives coming soon. Thanks so much for watching this video, and do something good in the world today.